Okay, this is going to be the solution to the question number six from paper one of the sample IB exam. So here we have a piece of wood that's 290 centimeters long, and it's going to be cut into a total of 10 pieces, each of which is 2 centimeters longer than the piece cut off before it. All the wood's going to be used, and we want to find a couple things. We want to find the length of the first piece and the length of the last piece. So this video, if you've been watching the others in order, this one's going to be actually quite a bit longer because I'm going to talk about quite a few different things here. So at the beginning, I'm going to sort of do the uh, sort of brute force method and just show you. And then I'm going to do a, a couple other things, and I'll talk about my reasons for this. So, okay. So let's start here. So we want to find our length of wood, right? We don't know. Let's look at the first piece, and we don't know what it is. So let's just call it, let's say that's the length x. So that's the length of the first piece. Okay, easy enough. First piece, if I can spell. Okay, so that's the first piece. The next one's two centimeters longer. So I'm not gonna write units, but I'm just gonna write x plus two, because that's how much, that, uh, that that's, would be the length of the second piece, right? It's two centimeters longer. And well, the next piece would be two centimeters longer than that, so it would be x plus 2 plus 2, but let's don't write that. Let's just write x plus 4. And well, the next one would have a length of x plus 6, and then x plus 8, x plus 10, x plus 12, x plus 14, x plus 16, x plus 18. Well, when, when, when should we stop? Let's count. So that's one piece, second piece, third piece, fourth piece, fifth piece, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's going to be the length of our ten pieces generically. So let me get rid of this part. Okay, so that's the length. Now all we have to do is just add these up, and that's what we're going to do. So one little trick with these is a lot of times don't don't add up. You know, don't do two plus four plus six plus eight. I mean, you can do that, but a little trick is oftentimes to add the outer parts. So notice you, if we add the 2 plus the 18, that's going to give us 20. If we do the 4 and the 16, well, 4 plus 16 is also going to give us another 20. Then we've got, let me see if I can squeeze this in here, 6 plus 14. Hey, guess what? That's also 20. We would have 8 and 12. So 8 plus 12 is also 20. And then the last one we would have is our, our 10. So we've got one, two, three, four 20s, and then we've got a 10 left over. So if we add all of this stuff up, so if we add all these together, we've got 1x, 2x, 3x's, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10x's, obviously. So we're going to have 10x's, plus we've got, again, we've got 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 10. So that's going to give us a total of 90. So that's the total length of all the pieces of wood. And again, we know that this equals 290 total. So now we've got our equation, and really, I think the worst of it's over. So we can subtract 90 from both sides. Let's subtract 90. We've got 10x equals, well, 290 minus 90 is going to be 200. Then we can divide both sides by 10, by 10. That's going to give us x equals 20. And that's, again, going to be the length of the first piece. So for part A, we know that the length of the first piece is 20 centimeters. OK, easy enough. And now we wanted to find, right, the, uh, the length of the last piece. Well, the last piece had a length of x plus 18 centimeters. So, okay, well, we can figure that out pretty easily as well, right? So the last piece, length of the... The length of the last piece is going to be, well, 20, because that's the value of x plus 18, which equals 38 centimeters. 
and boom, we're done. Hey, there's our solution. We've got the, the solution for both of these. So the thing that I want to talk about here that's a little bit longer is, you know, for something like this, you don't really want to, I mean, okay, so this one wasn't too bad because you're only cutting it again into 10 pieces. What if they cut it into 100 pieces or 1,000 pieces or gave you some really weird, you know, kind of kind of weird question like that? What would you do? So I'm going to show you, again, just to remind you some formulas on summation. So let me rewrite it. So this is where I said I'm going to show you a different way. And this part's a little bit longer. So if you're happy here, feel free to go on to the next one. But uh, I'm going to just point out a couple useful formulas, I think. That's why I'm going to... That's why I'm going to do this. So let me rewrite these. Okay. So what I would try to do is remember summation notation. So you're summing up things, right? That means you're adding things together. I'm going to try to come up with a formula for this stuff. Okay, so what am I doing? Well, I'm clearly adding x's every time. And then I'm adding multiples of 2. So let me start from i equals 1. I've got 10 items total, right? That's how many pieces we're adding together. And, okay, if I was just writing x plus 2, that would just mean x plus 2 plus x plus 2 plus x plus 2 plus x plus 2. And that's clearly not right because, right, it's not 2 every time. They're bumping up. So I need to multiply this by i. But, well, I've got to be careful because notice if you plug in i equals 1, if we start expanding this, I would have x times... Uh, x plus 2 times 1, and then I would have x plus 2 times 2, which is almost correct, but the first term should just be x, right? The, the, there's, there's no 2 at the beginning, so let's be a little careful about that. That's almost right. So what I can do, though, is I can put this in parentheses. Let me squeeze a parentheses in there, and I, I can subtract 1 from that i, because notice now if I start at i equals 1, at i equals 1, this is going to be equal to 0, and then I will just get x. And you can check that if you expand this, right? I mean, we're going to get x plus 2 times, well, 1 minus 1 plus x, uh, x plus 2 times, I'm trying to make sure I say this correctly, 2 minus 1 plus dot, dot, dot. The, my very last term is going to be at when I plug in, whoops, when I plug in 10, so x plus... 2 times 10 minus 1, and that's going to give me x plus 2. That's going to be my very first term. Excuse me. Let's be careful again. I, I, so I've got x plus 0, and then I'll have x plus, well, my next term is going to give me just x plus 2, which is what I want, and then dot, 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 plus, and my last one is going to be x plus, well, notice this part is going to be 9, so I'm going to get x plus 2 times 9, which is 18. So I'm not going to write all, all the terms again. But I would get that right back, and that's, that's my whole point. So I'm checking that my formula here is correct, and I think it's looking pretty good. Okay, so now let's, let's break this up. Let's talk about some summation formulas. So you could put this in brackets or parentheses or whatever, um, but it's understood that we're summing all this together. Okay, so we can break this up. We can write this as a summation from i equals 1 to 10 of x plus, and notice we could distribute this out. So I'm going to break this up as well. I'm going to do two steps at once. So i equals 1 to 10. If I distribute, I would get 2i, and then I could write... So notice I would... So this is going to be, okay, let me actually go ahead and do this. So this is i equals 1 to 10 of x plus, if I distribute, I would have 2i minus 2. So let me go ahead and put this in brackets. So that's what I'm breaking up on my next line. And then I have minus the summation from i equals 1 to 10, and uh, let's see, of 2. So notice I'm just breaking everything up, x plus 2i minus 2. 2, which is what I have right here. Okay, so now some important formulas. So this is the, the part that I wanted to talk about. So if you're just summing up, and, and we're going to use these actually, so here will be our, our, our basic formulas. 
So suppose I sum from 1 up to 10 of k. Well, notice there's no i in here. The, really, the only thing that has an i is this middle term, right? This, this second term. So it just says you're summing up k plus k plus k plus k 10 times. Well, what are you going to get? You're going to get 10 k's. Okay, so we'll talk about that. So instead of 10 k's, we're going to have 10 x's. And for this part, instead of having uh, um, 10 k's, we're going to have 10 twos, right? We're going to have 10 twos for that part. Now, the other part that I want to remind you of is that we sum up from i equals 1 up to 10 of 2i. Now, this coefficient, we can pull this out front. So from 1 to 10 of i, now there's a useful formula for this one as well. So if you sum up from i equals 1 to n of the letter i, that's going to give you n times n plus 1 divided by 2. So for example, if I was adding up, say, from i equals 1 to 5i, that just means we're doing 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. That says we're going to get 5 times, well, 5 plus 1 divided by 2. That's going to be 5 times 6, which is 30. And 30 divided by 2 is 15. And well, okay, hey, if you add these numbers up, you get 15, okay? So this is a very um, useful little um, formula to remember. This one, I should have just shaded in the top one. The bottom is just more of an illustration. So this is a very useful formula to remember if you're summing up just some basic numbers. Okay, so I'm going to use these two formulas because, again, maybe they made you add up, you know, what if it was cut up into 100 pieces? What if it was cut up into 100 pieces? You don't want to do that brute force method that we did at the very beginning. It would be too cumbersome. You wouldn't be able to, to uh, you would just be, I mean, you could do it for sure, but you're going to be wasting time. Okay, so let's do it this method. So the first part, I'm adding x plus x plus x plus x 10 times. Well, I'm going to get 10 x's. And again, that's exactly right. You know, when you add all these x's up, you should be getting 10x. So I think that makes sense. So then I'm going to get 2 times that summation from i equals 1 to 10 of i. We'll come back to that one in just a second. Minus, well now, again, so forget about the, the minus sign for a second. Just, this just says you're adding 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 10 times. So that's going to be 2 times, whoops, so that's going to be 2 times 10. And now let's use our formula that we saw just a second ago. So we've got 10x plus 2 times. Well, this, this top number is 10, so I'm going to get 2 times 10 times 1 larger, which is 11, divided by 2, minus, well, 20. Well, notice the 2s are just going to cancel. So this is going to be 10x plus 10 times 11, well that's 110, minus 20, and well that's 10x minus 90, which is the exact same thing that we came up right here, right? I didn't set it equal to 290 yet, but this is the length of all of those pieces of wood if you add them together, and that is really what the expression we're trying to come up with. Okay, so we, again, same thing now. I'm, I'm not going to rehash it out. Now you've got 2x minus 90, 10x, excuse me, 10x, oh, I wrote minus 90. Oh, gosh, i got to be careful. I was looking at that minus sign. 10x plus 90. I'm glad I, I, I said that out loud. Sometimes it's kind of good to talk to yourself in your brain so you catch those mistakes. So 10x plus 90, that's the expression that we wanted. 10x plus 90, and just like before, you would set it equal to 290. You would subtract 90, divide by 10, get x equals 20. That's, again, going to be the length of the first piece. And, again, you just plug that into the last part, and that would give you the length of the last piece. So for some reason, you know, a question like this was phrased, again, instead of cutting it into 10 pieces, if it was cut into 100 or 1,000 or a million, you could do this relatively quickly, um, and it would work. But... Again, if I saw this question on a test, if it's only 10 pieces, I would 
probably just do it this way because I would think in my head, you know, I can just do this really fast. And, and uh, on a, a timed exam, it's all about which method is the quickest. And I wouldn't probably be breaking out summations and all of this and, and trying to come up with a formula. I don't think I would be sitting there thinking about that. So this is something you have to keep in mind on, a, on, a, on an exam is what's the, the quickest way I can do this and get the correct answer. But again, you know, if they said they cut it up into a thousand pieces for some reason, I would definitely be doing this. I wouldn't be doing the other method. So, okay. So again, I think this one's, you know, the brute force method isn't too bad. This other stuff we've talked about here at the end is a little more, a little more labor intensive, but these are definitely things that you would want to know and be able to use on the IB exam is this summation notation and knowing these formulas. So, okay, long-winded example, but again, I think an, an instructive example. So I think it's, it's good. So, um, okay, I hope it helps and quite a bit of information in here. So if you don't catch it all the first time, certainly, uh, of course, feel free to, 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 you know, check it out again and, and, uh, yeah, soak it up. So, all right. Thanks guys.